Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today we're going to take a look at what abuse your suspension, more specifically your shocks, take on a daily basis. Now this is going to be pretty cool because your suspension is one of those things that you never get to see as you drive. You might have an idea of how it works, but what's really happening as you drive over a speed bump, or drive on the highway, or on a bumpy road, or even just a normal road? Well, I have my car rigged up with cameras in the cab, as well as in the rear under the car to see what really happens under those wheel wells as you drive. You can see my rear shock is all rusted and beat up. Well, as far as I know, these are the original shocks. So they're 14 years old and have 125,000 miles on them. Obviously, these puppies are way past their prime and they should have been replaced long ago. But this gives us a good opportunity to use cameras to do a before and after video to see how the suspension feels and reacts with the old shocks and then with brand new Monroe Sensitrax. So let's take this tire off so I can give you an idea of how the rear suspension works. So here's the rear suspension on my truck. We're going to use the rear suspension as an example because I could set up the GoPros and get a good view of everything. It's also a very simple suspension setup, so we'll be able to see any differences when we put the new shocks in. Right here we have the drum brakes, so the wheel mounts up to this, and we have the brakes. Then we go behind the brakes and you can see we have the axle. The axle runs across the truck and goes all the way across to the differential, where then it goes across to the other side. This is called a solid rear axle and it translates power coming from the engine into power to the wheels. So our solid rear axle is right here and then we have the leaf spring. The leaf spring is not only a spring, but it's also a structural component that holds the rear axle in place. Without this, the rear axle would just rip right off. So the leaf spring connects to the body here, runs across, mounts to the axle, runs across, and mounts to the body up here. Now these different layers in the leaf spring are called leafs. The more leaves you have, the stiffer the spring will be. And we'll see how the leaf spring works when we go for our ride. Working alongside the spring is the shock, which is very important. The shock absorber does exactly what the name implies. It absorbs the energy and acts as a dampener so the car won't bounce around everywhere on the road. Here's an example of what happens when you don't have a shock on your car. You can see there's no shock, and as I'm backing out of my driveway, the suspension is bouncing around and it never settles. This is obviously an extreme example, but when you have bad shocks, the same thing happens. A shock is basically a piston filled with fluid, which absorbs the impact. It dampens the suspension bounce, and you'll see that in a second when we go for a ride. So on our ride, we're looking at four different conditions. One is a bumpy, uneven road. Two is highway driving. Three is stopping and going. And four is a speed bump. The first condition is a bumpy road. You can see the rear axle and tire jumping around all over the place. The spring is reducing the bumpiness of the ride as the shock absorbers dampen and stabilize the suspension. It's crazy how much everything moves back there. The spring and shock are constantly working. After seeing this, I'm amazed that they last as long as they do. And this is only at 35 miles an hour. The next condition is cruising on the highway at 65 miles an hour. I'm using a ramp to get onto the highway. The highway is a lot smoother, but you can see that the suspension is making small adjustments. Now coming off the highway, there's a stop sign and I have to merge. Pay attention to the rear axle twisting under the torque from acceleration. I never realized how much the rear axle actually twists until now. That was pretty cool to see. And finally we have a speed bump. This speed bump was taken at 10 miles an hour. and this speed bump was taken slowly like you would normally do. I think that gives you an idea of how the suspension reacts under different conditions. Now let's change these shocks over to the new shocks and compare the difference in ride quality. Most shocks are really easy to replace. It's just two bolts, one at the bottom, one at the top. And I have videos on replacing the front and rear shocks, so if you want to see how to do that, just check the links in the description. With the shocks out, I want you to check this out. You could really see the difference in the old shock versus the new shock. The old shocks I could compress really easily with my hands and they don't feel smooth. These new shocks take a lot more force to compress. <clears throat> All right, now we'll add our new shocks. And with the new shocks in and a fresh coat of spray paint on the rear axle, yes, I'm that crazy with my cars, let's go for a ride. So I'm taking the same roads, and right off the bat, I really didn't think I would notice a difference, but I could totally feel a difference. 
For the first road condition, the bumpy road, you can really feel how much stiffer the ride is and the rear feels more steady rather than floating around like before. For the second road condition, the highway, I really don't notice too much of a difference, but it does feel like the car isn't floating as much. And now for the stop and go, I want to compare the before and after shots. So on the left is before and on the right is after. You can clearly see when you brake, the suspension doesn't bounce around, which means that the shocks are doing their job. When accelerating, the rear axle doesn't twist as much, and more of the power is translated to the wheels rather than twisting suspension, which is a good thing. And that's pretty neat that we could actually see a difference. And finally, let's get a side-by-side -side at the speed bump. Interestingly, the softness of the old shocks did a good job at preventing like a big jolt, while the new shock has more of a jolt to it. But you have a lot less bounce afterwards with the new shock, so you maintain more control. Just to give you a frame by frame because it's so hard to see in real time, check out the spring in the before compared to the after. You can see the new shock dampens the leaf spring a lot more than the old shock, and there's a lot less rebound. In the before, the spring rebounds more with the old shock. And you can see that right here where I show the distance from the frame to the spring. This proves to me that the ride is actually stiffer and it's not just in my head. So although I could tell you what I'm actually feeling, you could actually see that there is a performance difference between the new and old shock. Now I think that was pretty neat and something you don't see every day. Hopefully the video was interesting and enjoyable. If it was, remember to give the video a thumbs up. Also if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Up on the screen are shock replacement videos, and you can get to them by clicking on the screen or finding the links in the description below. I think the takeaway from this video is that your suspension, and especially your shocks, go through a lot on a daily basis. I was surprised to see how much they move around constantly. And this was a short video where I went less than 10 miles total. Imagine this happening every day for thousands of miles. That being said, you should check your shocks at around 50,000 miles to ensure that they're in good working condition. I have a video on how to tell if your shocks are good or bad, and you can check that out if you want.